So this is your test for the cool, awesome screws you got? Yeah, because I just want to barely get them under the surface so that um, instead of having to like fill big countersink holes, there's just enough so that we can thicken some epoxy and just do a swipe over it. Yeah, that's nice. It'll be quicker. Yeah. We've done the research, collected our materials, got a good stack of planks to start with, and now it's time to dry fit our first run. There's a bevel at the top of the waterline plank, so water can easily be shed. And just watch your waterline, okay. and just make sure you try to keep it about on the waterline. Okay. Right now, I'm gonna kind of take it off and on and figure out where I'm gonna put the The run at the waterline is the only one we have to dry fit because we want to make sure it's straight. Every other plank follows this edge, and nobody wants a wonky waterline. Determining where to put the screws relies on knowing where the main planking fasteners are. The guy we bought our second wooden boat from, who became a mentor for Garrett, said not to overly worry about hitting fasteners. He said, it's kind of like pissing into space and hitting a star. Throughout sheathing, we hit a few stars. But the nice thing is that instead of wood bunging the main fasteners, we used epoxy. So we immediately knew when we were no longer drilling into wood and could reposition the next screw before hitting the actual fastener and scratching the galvey. Wow. Getting the ends of the planks to conform to the hull is a challenge. Since we aren't steaming our lumber, it takes a little ingenuity to get this unruly plank in line. I mean, it's pretty much there. It needs to come down and touch, so. You want to drill? So, just go easy. <laughs> Ingenuity at its finest. This is how boats get built, one hobbit foot at a time. It looks the same as with your hands. Hold on now. Okay. Oh yeah. yeah. Hobbit heel it. holding it in his hobbit toe. Go, go easy. Yeah. Really. Scaffolding all right for you there? Up. Uh, no, when I when we permanently fit it, we're gonna fit it overhanging as well, uh, and then I'm just gonna buzz it off from the bottom.
When morning came, we opened our first bucket of tar. First one up. How's it going, my sticky tar queen? Really good. I'm too much of a dork. I'm excited. <laughs> Especially it's fresh, and now that it's getting like a little bit warm, you get to see like the change in temperature. When I first opened it, it was like really hard, and now it's just like so easy. <laughs> Can we build a boat now? Take a load off Daddy. Take a load free. So we've got the first run up, and now we're working on the second one, which we're pretty sure is the last one. Uh, we're gonna have to sort of measure and stuff where it goes into uh, the stem. So that's what Garrett is doing very slowly, but it's happening. <laughs> Too much back talk from the help. <laughs> Maybe you need better help. That's good enough. Beer delivery! Just as Garrett and I were starting to get sick of each other, our neighbor Tyler came bearing refreshments and helped us complete our goal. Finish sheathing from the waterline down to the chine before the day's end. Thanks to Tyler's efficient seeking mind, we continuously improved on our rhythm, and this was just the beginning. We negotiated a work trade, 
mutually donating hours on each other's projects. Tyler really helped us keep up the momentum and energy. Sheathing very well could have been a huge drain, but instead, we found ourselves laughing. Are you getting audio? I am. Yeah, this is special. Oh, hey. That's a big foot you have, Tyler. Oh, thank you. It's big and floppy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it's getting weird. <laughs> Alright, right. tire him up. anymore but thanks to Tyler's help we finished what Garrett wanted to get done today which was from the water line down to the chine so we'll have to wait and show you in the morning This isn't our first time sheathing. The more commonly known method is to copper plate. In 2013, we bought our third wooden boat. She was a Ralph Winslow Ketch, built in 1951. Garrett learned quick in six months, extensively restoring Ronin. Having always been curious about copper plating and not finding much on the internet or old books, like most things, he just started. First thing to shape was felt also called roofing or tar paper. It's hard to see, but next were the sheets of copper. Each piece custom cut and some serious tar laid between each layer. This is when I first earned my Tar Queen nickname. Just like sheathing this time around, it's so beautiful once you can clean up all the tar. On it went, tar, felt, tar, copper, leaving the felt long so the seams overlap. We probably spent close to two grand on materials and time in the yard. But when we were done, we had a 20 plus year bottom job. Ronan is still sailing out of Sausalito. We bought her for six grand and sold her for 10, eight months later. Garrett and I had been married only a year and finished this flip before our 21st birthday. Two years of cruising and two boats later, we had enough saved up to start building Red Aviva but I'd be a fool to tell you that was our plan all along.
Ain't that bullshit. <laughs> but it's done. You feel okay about it? Oh yeah. Yeah? It worked I, out all right? Yeah. After you got the new blade? Yeah, it's still a pain in the ass, but... R kind of just gums up the blade, makes yeah. it super slow. But so I just, I kind of just did a sloppy lop off job, uh, and then I'm gonna come in with a little planer and just kind of do some swipes down along to kind of clean it up and. Uh, get everything nice but I think yeah it came out great the only thing I've left that I want to do today is um, just kind of go along where all the overlap most of them look pretty damn good but on some of them that are like really sharp mm -hmm. the ends poke out a little bit so I just kind of drill up here and then uh -huh. pop a little positive galvanized pin nail in it okay So I just finished episode number 34, uh, it's about the rudder, and it's now exporting and says three hours, and then I looked back from the screen and realized it's nine o'clock, and I can't see anything else in the boat, but my computer screen. <laughs> Uh, I say it's time for a drink and go see what Garrett's up to. <laughs> up next will be our second day of actually putting planks onto the boat. We start on the bottom section of sheathing. Go. Visit a scrapyard for mast fittings. Finish sheathing from midships up to the bow. Lovely linemanship. <laughs> and take our chain plates over to Rolf's to create and weld the doohickey thingy majiggies that go on top to receive the dead eyes. So the power stance, Ruth. Da 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 swap.